By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a match played in X points. This is X points final 29. Wow, so many finals. If you enjoy finals of X points, by the way, we have tons of those here on Timmy Talks. I have a special playlist. It's probably a link popping up right now uh, with all the finals in there. So if you want to watch the finals, well, almost all the finals, you can check out that playlist. It's pretty nice also to see how the X points have evolved. So if you're an avid X points player, it's going to be super interesting for you to watch for example, uh, the decks in the finals four, and then the decks in the finals 14, then the decks in the finals now uh, 29. Talking about that final, in today's match, we're going to see the deck, a version built by Felix, and he's going to take on a deck called Quicksilver. It's uh, red, blue, and green, and it's built by David Perez. So really strong decks, obviously, since they made it all the way to the finals. Now, before I start with the deck tech section of this video, I would first like to point out that as always, uh, you can also skip this section and first go to the matches. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about X points. So if you're not familiar with the format, it is a format with a points list that you can see right here. Uh, if you want to know more about it, please check out the links in the description below. You'll find links to, for example, their Facebook page where you can find all the information about this uh, this type of magic. And actually, if you want to join the X Points family, it's completely free. These tournaments are held every single month. So uh, yeah, check it out. If it's something for you, sign up. Um, and then there's one more thing that I'd like to mention, and that's the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because I have my very own Patreon program where you can become a patron of the show. And by becoming a patron of the show, you're kind of sponsoring the content that I'm making financially. So you're really helping me to keep doing what I'm doing. So if you enjoy my content, please take a moment to check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, you can already become a member for just $1. And with that money, you're really supporting me as a content creator. So please consider becoming a patron. Okay, now that all the info is out of the way, we are ready to start with the deck tech section of this video. I'm going to start with the deck of David Perez, the Quicksilver Brew. Let's have a look. And here we're seeing the deck of David, so a Quicksilver deck, right? And I mean, this looking like a strong deck. I think this finals is going to be two archetypes, right? We've got the control player with the deck, obviously, and then we've got the more aggressive player, and that is David, right? That's his Quicksilver deck. What he wants to do is just, you know, play script sprites, curd apes, you know, follow up with the Elvish archers, then turn three, perhaps play a Surrendip, get some Urnums going, and... On top of that, he is playing with a lot of direct damage, right? We've got three psionic blasts, we've got four chains, four bolts. You see these ergo decks like more and more. There's like so much direct damage now, at least it feels to me, uh, you know, currently going on in the meta. It makes it quite hard. I think that maybe life gain needs to be played perhaps a little bit more in the decks that are playing against these like direct damage pack builds. Um, what is interesting here is that we do see four giant groves, but we don't see berserks. So, I mean, you got to make choices in life, right? And berserk, of course, being a risky card, sometimes you're setting yourself up for failure. So it's kind of interesting to see that he's decided not to and just choose to play with more direct damage, I guess, and with the full playset of those giant groves. He's also playing with a little bit of counter magic, which I actually kind of like in this aggressive shell, you know, the three counter spells, because what he can do is he's really quickly play out the threats and then defend the threats with counter magic. So try to keep the threats around with the counter magic. And he's also, of course, playing with uh, Ancestral Recall. That's probably one of his biggest point cards right in the deck. And with, uh, with the Wheel of Fortune, I understand these two cards because this deck goes really fast. So you could have a situation where you're just emptying your hand really, really quickly because you've got low casting cost creatures, you've got low casting cost spells, and what are you going to do with no cards in hand? And that's where you need your Wheel of Fortune to kind of restock on uh, on cards. And of course, where your Ancestral Recall is handy as well. Also, I think the Sylvan in the deck is quite good because this is an aggro deck, right? So as soon as you've got that Sylvan, you're going to draw your cards very aggressively. You don't mind about paying for a life because you want the game to be over and done with as quickly as you can. Talking about getting the game done with as quickly as you can, let's take a look at a deck that actually wants to do the opposite. Let's take a look at the deck by Felix. And here we see the deck version of Felix, the X points version. And I think the biggest impact when you're playing the deck 
with your 10 points list is obviously that you're not going to have those power cards, right? You really have to make the tough decisions. You cannot play Ancestral Recall and Library of Alexandria and all those cards in your deck because you simply don't have enough points to do, to do that. So he's made some other decisions, only playing with two power cards, the uh, Mox Pearl and the Mox Sapphire. So it's kind of nice to see this list, you know, that... It, it, it's a project that I was thinking about lately to make a revised version of the deck because I just like to play revised only and that would probably have a lot of similarities with this list. But there's of course a card that the revised doesn't have unfortunately as a reprint and that card is The Abyss and I think The Abyss is, is really strong in this one because he's playing without any creatures anyway. So The Abyss is a world enchantment from Legends that reads at the beginning of each player's upkeep destroy target non-artifact creature that player controls of their choice and it cannot be regenerated. And I think that card could be a huge problem for his opponent today, David, because David is not playing with white. So it's going to be really difficult for him to get rid of enchantments. You know, he doesn't have access to disenchant. Also, he's not playing Tranquility in his sideboard so I mean that's going to be tough for him of course he is playing with counter magic but I think he really needs those counters to be focused on the abyss although there are other cards in here that are really good against his creature heavy deck of David because he's playing with um, Wrath of Gods he's playing with Swords to Plowshare so basically this deck is built to play against really aggressive decks because it has a lot of answers to those creature threats so that's of course more bad news for David here I, I really think when looking at this list that Felix is the favorite, which means we're probably in for a very long game. Although, you know, I'm saying that although, of course, you know, David's deck is so explosive, if he can get off to a good start with all the direct damage combined, he can just, you know, kill Felix before Felix is able, you know, to gain life, you know, to remove the creatures to kind of get his thing going. But I really think that, you know, Felix is a slight favorite in this matchup. So the reason I'm saying this is because of all the creature removal that he has, also because of the disenchants against the factories, but also because of the ivory towers in his deck. You know, ivory tower, that's life gain. If there's one thing that an aggro deck packed with direct damage doesn't want to see, it's life gain, you know. So if Felix can find the ivory tower, can find a situation where he just draws a lot of cards and gains a lot of life with the tower, it's going to be super difficult for uh, for David to kind of punch through that because at the same time, Felix is probably kind of controlling the board with all the creature removal. Now, there's one thing in this deck that I actually didn't think of before, and I think it's a really cool uh, combination of cards that I'm probably going to integrate in Forgotten Combos as well, and that is the Abyss and the Hive, right? So the Abyss, just to get back to that, says... Uh, destroy target non-artifact creature and guess what the hive you know it's five to cast five and tap for a one one flying colorless <laughs> creature but it's also an artifact creature so it goes together really well with the abyss so that's some really nice synergy and again the fact that he's using the hive as a win con shows how incredibly slow his version of the deck is so we could be in here for a while like i said i think felix is a slight favorite Although, like I said, David's deck super explosive. I'm going to give it like a 60-40. Let me know in the comments below what deck is your personal favorite. Do you agree with me? Do you think that Felix is the favorite in this matchup? Or do you think that David will just be too quick and too slivery to uh, to get uh, uh, beaten here by the deck? And is the deck simply too slow in this specific matchup? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, and now that... The deck techs are out of the way. We are ready. Let's go to the finals of X Points 29. Felix versus David. Here we go. Game number one of the X Points Final 29 here is on its way. David playing the Quicksilver deck there at the bottom, starting with a Curd Ape turn one. There we see Felix playing a version of the deck, starting with Ivory Tower. So uh, he's going to gain some life next turn. There is, ooh, nice, a Taiga. That means the Curd Ape is now a 2-3, can swing in. There goes the monkey. Two damage here for Felix, dropping to 18. Oh, there is a Giant Grove. So uber aggressive start here, but not more pressure though on the board by David. Would have been great for him if he could find a second Curd Ape, for example. But playing very aggressively, we do see the life of Felix going up a little bit because of the tower. And uh, this is difficult, right, for Felix having that uh, very quick pressure. He does have the City of Brass now, which gives him access to white. Remember, he's playing with a lot of creature removal, three Wrath of Gods, uh, four Swords to Plowshares, and of course also the Abyss. Perhaps he's going to fire off the Swords here during combat. Let's first see what David can do here, taking on turn number three. There's a Factory attacking for two. And there we see Felix dropping two more points to 14. Can we see, for example, a surrender a free here by David? 
that would be good for him. Now he's going to go back up because of the ivory tower. So going back up to 16. Let's see what he can do. A little bit in the tank here. Tapping the underground sea. Another ivory tower passing the turn. There's a psionic blast though. So David keeps doing what he likes to do most, which is play super aggressively. We see Felix dropping to 12, but the double ivory tower is going to be challenging here for David. He doesn't play with a lot of artifact or enchantment removal. Attacking here for two with the Kurt Ape. And there's another Giant Grove. Are we now going to see exactly? There's a Swords to Plowshares. So the Kurt Ape is a goner. Does mean an, an extra point of damage for Felix because of the City of Brass, but he doesn't take the damage, of course, from the Ape. And now we see David tapping three here for a Surrender, a free to three, four flyer from Arabian Nights. Does deal one damage to its controller each upkeep. And Felix again gaining a little bit of life, I think, from the Ivory Tower going up to 13. Let's see what he can do. Next turn, he's probably going to take three from the Surrender. Potentially, there could also be an attack from the, from the factory. He would take five. He would drop down to eight. Felix really in the tank here, just passing the turn. Knows that he has that double tower. Perhaps he's got another Swords in hand that he can use or a Disenchant that he can use on a factory if David activates it. There's the attack going in for three. And Felix dropping here to 10. Only two cards in hand though for David. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. This is, this is kind of... I understand he needed a moment to think about this move. Because remember, Felix has double towers. He's going to gain six life next turn. He's going to go up to 16. I mean, it was a good play in the sense that David was running out of cards. But yeah, that six life for Felix, that is a pretty big risk that he's taking. Probably thinking that he's got enough direct damage to kind of... Take six damage away from Felix again. There we see uh, the elf, the two-one first striker, elfish uh, archer. There we see Felix asking for the hand size. Oh, this maze of if is looking really good. And Felix gone up to sixteen. By the way, because of the double ivory tower, this is a really nice game one. To see this battle going on of Felix trying to, you know, stay alive, gain life, draw the, the game into mid-game, late game. And David, of course, understanding I gotta destroy him as fast as I can. There's the attack. Probably gonna see a maze activation here. There's a disenchant there on the uh, factory. Does mean a damage for Felix. And I believe a maze now probably on the surrender and two damage for the elf. It is what it is. And now, of course, David can still respond, for example, with the Giant Grove after the Maze of If activation because Felix is going to do that before the damage step. So this is really kind of a way of waiting the longest. You don't want to be too hasty with your Giant Groves. Anyway, we're not going to see a Giant Grove anyway. We see another Surrendip here and a Script Sprites. So, so many creatures, so aggressive. And remember, Felix is playing with three Wrath of Gods. You know, if he's got one in hand... He doesn't have enough mana yet, though. So if he could drop a land next turn, drop another white source, he could play a, a Wrath, and that would be disastrous for David. Now, do remember, David is playing with three counter spells in his deck. There we see a second Maze of If, by the way, and they disintegrate for one, taking care of the Archer. Yeah, this is now a little problematic. He needs to find a way to get rid of the Mazes. That is just super annoying here for David. And I like the combination Maze of If, Wrath of God, by the way, because when you play a maze, you're kind of forcing your opponent to play out more creatures, and that only makes your Wrath of God better. And also a maze is a really early answer to creature threats, where a Wrath is more for the mid-game, late-game answer to the threat. So they really work together quite well, in my opinion. Felix here dropping a planes, passing a turn. Things are really looking up for, for Felix, by the way. He's, he's managed to stay alive with the towers. And, uh, of course, with the help of the mazes as well. Now he only takes one point of damage, dropping to 16. Okay, there's there's a growth, but it's just not going to do much because Felix is just gaining so much life from the towers. There's also um, a chain lightning. Does that mean that perhaps he's got another way to, to draw some cards in hand? Only two cards left for David. Felix going back up to 12 again after the tower. I really wonder if we're going to see a land drop raft. It's not even that necessary, you know, when you're Felix. Maybe you don't want to because 
I mean, David's going to die to his own um, Serendips. And there we see a COP red. In response to that cast, we see a, a lightning bolt. And another lightning bolt. Okay, so he can prevent the, the damage from one of the bolts, but then takes three more from the other. He's on eight. But I mean, it's still looking bad, though. There's another Sprites passing the turn. Felix gaining life again from the tower. It's going to go up to nine. And only two more life, by the way, for David. Oh, no, six more life. So he's going to take damage, right? Going to drop to four. Or did he take that damage already? Okay, there we see a giant growth. A lot of things happening here. Felix staying alive though, going back up from four back up to eight. And I guess David took the damage, so he's on six now and not on four. So David's on six, Felix on eight. And now he's gonna drop to four. There's the attack. Two damage here for Felix, he's gonna drop to six. That's it. We see David here picking up the card saying, you know, I, I can't win this one anymore. So the first win here for, for Felix, and it shows what I said in the deck deck already. His deck is made to play against these aggressive decks, and that's why I think David uh, Felix is a strong favorite here against David. But who knows? Everything's possible. The deck of David is very explosive. We're gonna, going to let these players sideboard, and we will catch up with them in game number two. Game number two of the finals here of X points 29. So Felix winning the first game. Let's see what David can do, starting with a tropical island, passing the turn. So no early pressure for David. Felix starting here with a Mox Pearl and an underground sea, passing the turn. No ivory towers for him. So we're seeing a different start here than in game one. There is the Elfish Archers 2-1 first striker rare. And that's pretty good here. Let's see if Felix has an answer. There's a Desert. That's actually a pretty good answer. Desert, a card from Arabian Nights. It can deal one damage to target attacking creature after you've taken the damage. That's, of course, a bit of a problem here for David. So there is a Volcanic Island. And I mean, this, this is just so annoying for David because he knows he has to like quickly get damage in and then you've got this one Desert that's kind of holding you back. Super annoying. This is quite good for him, though. The Sylvan Library. Quick disenchant, though, on the Sylvan. Ancestral Recall in response. That's always quite nice when your opponent is, uh, well, basically tapped out, only having that one desert, so you don't have to worry about counter magic, just using that Ancestral Recall. There's a second Underground Sea in the past from Felix. There's another Volcanic Island here by David. Can he deploy some threats? He is playing with Urnums as well. The 4 or 5 powerhouse from Arabian Nights. Not playing it though. Passing the turn. This is really good news for Felix. Playing out another lands. Got 5 mana now. There is a Psionic Blast here on end step, I assume. To Felix. And oh, look at that. Countering it here with a Flash Counter. That is really sweet. Card from Legends. That is really nice. I guess that's some sideboard tech here from Felix. Really cool to see that. Oh, look at that. Using the strip mine to get rid of the desert and attacking for two. And Felix here finding a swords to plowshares here. But that's, I mean, that's not too bad. David perhaps thinking about countering this. I mean, I think I would just let it resolve. Obviously, I don't know the hand of David, but it looks like he is gonna counter. The reason I would let it resolve is because it's a two for one. Uh, I'm sorry, a one for one. So it's not that big of a deal. And I would try to focus more on using my counter magic, for example, for the Abyss or the Wrath of God, you know, because those cards are really going to make the difference. Then again, I don't know the hand of David. I know he wants to play a quick game. Maybe he doesn't have any other creature threats. So it also makes sense to protect the Archer here. There we see a COP blue. Oh man, I'm loving this sideboard tag by Felix. How often do you see a circle of protection blue in a match? Like never. There's a source. 
And I guess the fact that uh, Felix is playing with a circle of protection blue shows kind of tells you a lot about the meta, right? It tells you that people are playing a lot of Surrendips and are playing a lot of Psionic Blasts in the meta. So it's worth playing with a COP blue. I mean, back in the day, back in, 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 in 95, when I started playing, COP Blue was, was the least played Circle of Protection, I think, together with uh, maybe a, a COP Green. But I think COP Blue was, was the least played of the Circles of Protection. Felix, uh, it's Felix's turn now, by the way. He's just passing. There we see a, uh, a Lightning Bolt. That means Felix drops to 13 here. But I mean, that's not too bad. David's playing with so much direct damage, though he could kind of go on the direct, direct damage plan here. Felix just playing a land passing turn. I mean, Felix has a lot of answers, so his hand could be full of answers. And of course, he doesn't really need to do anything. I mean, he's the player with the deck. He wants to, the game to take long. It's more concerning for David. Then again, if you're David, you're thinking, you know what, I'm just going to draw into my direct damage and... Uh, Try to solve it that way. Here we see a Chaos Orb by Felix. Oh, look at this countering it. Oh, there's a counter spell though. That is too bad. Are we going to see maybe Red Elemental Blast here from David? Oh, but I'm loving this card. Oh, what's the name again? It's from Antiquities. It's one red and it can counter target artifacts. So only that. So it's super good against, for example, a Trike or in this case, a Chaos Orb. And there we see a Counterspell on the Counterspell. Oh man, what a sweet moment here in the match. I'm really enjoying this. Both players really, you know, sideboarding quite well against each other. There's a reason, of course, that they're here in the finals. And we see 12 life now for Felix, by the way. And of course, uh, David thinking about his next move. There's a Surrendip, so he was thinking about not playing it because of the COP blue by Felix. And Felix wanting to counter it, changing his mind, realizing he's got a COP blue on board. And I guess if you're David, you're thinking, you know what? I mean, at least it's going to cost him a mana each, each turn. He's got to tap a land down, and that's something. Or maybe he's got a bigger plan with it. Who knows? We're going to see next turn. He's going to untap, take a damage, of course, from his own Surrendip. So he's going to drop to 20. He's going to attack for 4. There we see the prevention. So just 1 damage taken. Going to drop to 11. And I guess he already took the damage. So he's got, he went to, uh, to 21. Oh, Wrath of God. Okay, that took me a moment. But there's a Wrath of God. Oh, man. And that Wrath is painful. So that's kind of why I talked about you know keeping maybe a counter spell for the Wrath. There we see a Shatter, so it's clear that David wants to empty his hand here, so I guess he's got to draw 7. I'm expecting him to play maybe a Wheel of Fortune here. Yeah, there's the Wheel of Fortune. You can see at, the, at a certain point it took me a while to notice it, but that's probably also why he was quite aggressive with the Counterspell earlier. Perhaps he already had the Wheel in hand and just wanted to empty his hand. And then of course it was a great play because you're protecting your creature, dealing some extra damage at the same time, emptying your hand, making it possible to play that wheel in a, an aggressive way. I think that's what you want to do when you're David. And, um, you know, David now looking at his hand. What can he do? Are we going to see some Curd Apes? I think Curd Apes are really good at this board. He's got the forests in the form of the Tropical Islands, the Taiga, and the Basic Forest. He's got two untapped Volcanic Islands. There we see an Elfish Archer. And just a pass, though. Ooh, not a lot of fuel there, it seems, for David. Perhaps he's got a lot of direct damage in hand. And now we've got four underground seas there on the side of Felix. That is looking pretty sweet. Let's see what else he can do. I mean, he doesn't have to do anything. Maybe he's got like a swords in hand and he's just going to wait. Okay, he's going to play it now main. There's a counter spell though, again, on the swords to plowshares. There's a Felwer stone. Tapping two more for another Felwer stone. Playing a circle of protection red instead of the Felwer stone, changing his mind. I think that's a good decision because, uh, you know, perhaps David's got a lot of burn there in hand. 
Let's see what he can do. Felix now on 9, by the way. So that's quite low for him. I think a big difference between the games here is that in this game, Felix hasn't found his ivory towers, which makes him a little bit more vulnerable. Going to drop to 7. There's a script sprites. And there's a surrender of Afrit. So still choosing to play out the Afrits. I kind of like that style, by the way, you know, because, I mean, it's costing Felix mana, right? Yes, you take a damage each turn, but then again, I mean, if it's going to take 19 turns, if the game's going to take that long, you're probably going to lose anyway, since you're the aggressive player. So I'm understanding this move here by David. He also has a Mishra's Factory on the board, by the way. So next turn, he could swing in also with the Factory. There's a pass turn. There's a Wrath of God again, the Wrath. And I'm, I'm just, I'm still wondering if you're David, should you've kept those counter spells for the Wraths instead of for the Swords? I mean, I, I don't know. But the Wraths are just so brutal here. There's going to be an Animate. I'm expecting a Disenchant here, but um, I guess it's not there. So... Two more damage. And look at the life total of Felix. He's on four. I mean, David is so close here. Four life for Felix. He's got to be careful with using the City of Brass there. Ooh, Disrupting Scepter. Could use it in the main, but that's risky though. You know, because you want to keep your mana open for your circle of protections. I mean, I think if you're Felix, you don't want to use the Scepter now. I, I would wait. You just want to be super sure. I mean, you're too low to take risks. He's on four. There's the animate. There's the attack. Now we're going to see a disenchant, I guess. There's the disenchant. No counter magic from David. There's the script sprites. 1-1 one, one flyer. The desert is a little bit annoying here for David. But I mean, he could swing in. Giant Grove. Kill Felix, he's on four. Remember, desert only works after the damage is taken. Felix, three cards in hand. Also three cards in hand for David here. Game number two. Felix is one game up. If Felix wins this, he crowns himself the champion of X points 29. There's the activation of the Disrupting Scepter. And the thing about the Scepter is, yes, it's a good card, but the downside of it is your opponent gets to choose what they want to discard. It looks like he's going to do an, uh, play out another card here. Tapping two, untapping again. Has that Felwer Stone there and the Underground Sea. There's a Disintegrate for one there on the creature. I think that's a good decision. It is removed, by the way, so he shouldn't go to the graveyard, but I don't think it'll have a big impact. Although David is playing with Regrowth, but I'm, I'm sure he's not going to Regrowth the, the Script Sprites. There's the pass. And David now, I mean... He knows he's close, but he also knows that the longer it takes, the more the game is slipping away from him. As long as Felix doesn't gain any life, I still feel that David is in a position where he wants to, you know, keep playing, keep trying to find that out. Remember, this is the finals. And David here has to discard, discarding a Lightning Bolt, actually choosing to discard a Shatter instead. Playing out a factory here. Okay, so that factory is quite good. Although, of course, Felix now has a maze as well. I mean, Felix's entire deck is built to play against these kind of aggressive decks. And that's that's exactly the problem here for David. So even though his deck is really well fine-tuned, it is very difficult for him here. Animating, attacking, and, and now he's mazing it back. Felix there discarding the island to the Disrupting Scepter. There's another pass. And again, discarding another land card. So just lots of lands in hand here for David. And I mean, that COP blue and COP red is very brutal for him because it means he cannot just, you know, win the game with a psionic blast or uh, with a bolt. Force here to discard another card. Look at that. The Giant Grove, that is too bad. You know, next turn, that Giant Grove could have been a game winner. He could have attacked with both, waited until Felix used the mace, Giant Grove, the other creature, win the game. Yes, of course, there's a pretty big chance that maybe Felix has a sword or something, but still. 
And I guess he's got COP red, so it wouldn't work, actually. I'm a little bit wishful thinking here, because now, of course, he's going to use the COP for the Kurt Ape, Kurt Ape being a red source. So what I just said wouldn't work. David needs a green creature. Oh, another Maze of If. Ah, oh, that is brutal here. This is really tough for David. There's a regrowth, though. Ancestral, I guess? Or maybe Sylvan? Ooh, Wheel of Fortune could be interesting as well. He's got a lot of nice picks in his graveyard there. I believe there's a Sylvan in there, an Ancestral Recall, and a Wheel of Fortune. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking Wheel as well. Because that just gives you seven new cards. I mean, Gamble, you know? Yep, there's the wheel. I'm liking this. And yeah, you're giving Felix seven new cards, but at this point in the game, you know, this is better than slowly bleeding to death. I'm liking this much, much more. We uh, really liking the player by David. Both players getting seven new cards. Okay, there's a factory. That's good. Land drop for turn. No, there's a crumble. Ooh, could play the crumble here on the scepter, which makes sense. Scepter's going to go. I mean, you have a full hand. You don't want to lose your, your cards to the scepter. Downside here is that uh, Felix is gaining life, though, from the crumbles, going back up to seven. What else is he going to do here? I mean, Tranquility would be so good for David, but as we could see in the deck deck, he's not playing with it main. He's not playing with it side. So it's just not there. This Urnum is pretty good, though. So now next turn, he can attack with two factories and an Urnum if nothing changes, and Felix can send two of those back. Ooh, there's a Strip Mine, though. That could take care of one of the two factories next turn. Well, actually, now already, but probably Felix is going to wait until combat. Oh, this is tough for David. Every time that David kind of finds an opening, Felix has answers. And of course, that is what his deck does. Finding answers. And actually, Felix, I'm really hoping that you can play the Hive, make tokens, and, you know, win from David with your 1-1 one, one flying Wasp tokens that are costing 5 to make every single turn, which would be really hilarious. Especially if you can combine it with the Abyss and kind of show us that combo in action. That would be really sweet. We can see Felix, by the way, thinking about strip mining main here, one of the factories. I think I would just wait. He's probably going to do that. Uh, tapping two here, a Felwer Stone and an Underground, untapping them again. So he is in the tank here. Okay, tapping two again, untapping them again. <laughs> what is he going to do? What are you going to do, Felix? Okay, he's going to play a Felwer Stone. I, I think that was the Felwer Stone that, that, that took most thought Although I do have uh, a finals of a player uh, uh, taking like half an hour, well, half an hour, maybe I'm exaggerating, but taking at least 10 minutes to just play out a basic land. Then again, I guess with his hand, the basic land had some kind of impact on the game. Sometimes, and I'm sure that you recognize this if you play Magic often, sometimes you can overthink things, make it too complex. And that can lead to bad decisions. Other times, it is the, the thinking that's going to save you. Actually, most of the time, the thinking is going to save you. And I do think that, you know, online formats, um, you do see a lot of, you know, combo and control decks because, of course, online, there's not that time pressure. When you're playing tournaments in real life, uh, a round is limited to 50 minutes. So you do see the deck being successful, of course, in those tournaments. Uh, but it does require you to sometimes play a little bit quicker or, of course, just play these one-game matches. Anyway, um, David here taking the turn, animating everything, turning it sideways and attacking. I'm expecting here to see exactly a strip mine here on one of the factories. Exactly. And then using the mazes on the, uh, the two other creatures. Oh, we've got a divine offering here. Taking care of the other factory. Yeah, this is just more bad news for Felix. Uh, sorry for David. You know, Felix having all the answers. Doesn't even want to use his COP red here, just using his mazes. And actually, another card that's really good against Maze of If, but of course a card you don't see that much in X points because it's got a lot of points on, a, on it, is Time Walk. I love it when, you know, you're attacking, your opponent is tapping out with the mazes, and then you've got your Time Walk. And like, well, you know, your mazes are not going to work anymore. 
But I don't think that David or Felix are playing with uh, with Time Walk because of that points. Remember, this is X points. You've got 10 points to spend. So you got to think about how to use that on cards with points on them. And I believe Maze is a pointed card as well. Here we see an attack for three. Using the Maze, using the COP. I mean, there's no problem here for Felix at all. There's his Crisp Sprites. I mean, and even now, Felix is not even in, in, in trouble, you know. Four creatures on the side of David, but he cannot push through because of the double maze and the COPs. And Felix here finding another card. Tapping four. Yeah, there's the Abyss. Kind of the card that I expected a long time. We haven't seen it yet. So this is the first time in this match we're seeing it. The Abyss being so good against his board state. I guess, yeah, you want to get rid of the Surrendip because that is slowly killing you, right? I wonder, by the way, if you shouldn't still take the damage from the Surrendip. Let me know in the comments below. I think you do. There is an Urnum. So we've got two Urnums now. Okay, and remember, he doesn't have COP green, or at least we haven't seen it yet. So maybe next turn, Felix can deal a point of damage. Or sorry, David can, can deal a point of damage. Of course, Felix being the player uh, on the defense here with the deck kind of formula. So next turn, I expect David to kind of lose the Curdape to the Abyss. And then he's going to attack with everything, and he'll be able to deal one point of damage. But maybe David has a lot of Giant Groves in hand. So, I mean, it is kind of risky. Asking uh, about the, gra the graveyard here. And we see three counter spells in the graveyard of David. Now we know that he's only playing with three. Felix doesn't. So maybe he's thinking he could have a uh, counter spell number four there in, the, in his deck still. But we know he's only playing with three. So he's played out all his counter magic. And of course it makes sense for Felix to ask this. Because he's probably also worried. Uh, and now we see David, by the way, has to sack a creature to the abyss still. Untap, upkeep, and then draw. There's the attack. Now remember, Felix does have a double desert, so he is going to kill the sprites. There we see an activation, killing the sprite, but at least it's one more damage for Felix. Dropping to six, but it's going so slow for David, and David's going to lose more creatures because of that abyss. I mean, this is really bad news here for David. There we see a Taiga. And I mean, I, I, I'm going to predict something already, which maybe is risky because maybe David does find a way out of this, but I think Felix is going is gonna to win this. I mean, it's so airtight for him now. Also considering that David, I believe, doesn't have any creature, uh, sorry, uh, enchantment removal. Are we going to see the Hive here for five? No, he's going to tap more. What is he going to play out here? A recall, probably. He's playing with one recall in the deck. I don't think he's playing with Brain Geyser. Yep, there's a recall. So playing a recall for three cards here. What is he going to toss? And I mean, that, that graveyard is full of good stuff. So Felix uh, taking his time here. And that makes sense, of course. He knows that if he wins this game, he is the champion of X points 29. Tossing two lands and a mox, it seems. And what is he getting back? And he disintegrates. That's looking quite good. Is that a jam day tome or is that the hive? I believe it's a jam day tome. And a counter spell. I mean, that's what these deck players always do. And I get it. I get it. But it's so frustrating when you're playing against the deck and you're already behind. And then you see them getting back another counter spell just to be extra safe from their graveyard. You know, it always gives me this yuck feeling. David, by the way, playing the Curdip, taking it back because of the Abyss. Ivory Tower, you know, now Felix is going to go on the live gain train. Okay, so it was the Hive and not the Jam Day Tome. I'm liking this. I'm like, now we're seeing the Hive and the Abyss. Thank you, Felix, for showing us the combo. I actually really like that about your version of the deck, that you're playing the Hive with, um, you know, with the Abyss. I think that's really cool. 
There was a small glitch there, it seemed. But yeah, I mean, this is this is as good as game over, I think, for David. Because now Felix is going to gain life from the tower. He's got the disintegrate in hand, remember that. So he could play a big disc. Got to worry a little bit about the uh, blue elemental blast. If that's in the deck of David, not quite sure. Felix there having three flowers. Yep, he's going to make a token. Felix, are you telling me you don't have the Hive tokens? Leave a comment down below, Felix. I'll send you some Hive tokens. Sorry, some Wasp tokens, I should say. And now he's making another token, attacking for two. So now, I mean, slowly David's going to take the hits. And he's going to pass the turn. And of course, Felix also gaining life because of the Ivory Towers. He's now up to eight. David's on 14, it seems. Going to make another Wasp there. Gain some more life. Attack for three. Bolt on one of them. I mean, if you start bolting Wasp tokens, you know the game's over. But I do understand, David, this is a final. And you just, you just want to continue. Maybe there's some kind of miracle that you haven't thought of that's still going to grant you the victory. Remember, Felix was on four at a certain point in this game. But the COPs just really saved him. And here we see David just trying to, to do what he can to put some kind of pressure on. And I do understand this play because at least it's going to stop the uh, the Wasps. Or, or or is it? I mean, one of the things that Felix can do is actually attack with the Wasps. And the one that's getting blocked, take it out of combat with the Mace. That's exactly what he does here. So that means two more points of damage for David and no Wasp loss for Felix. There's a pass turn. And I mean, Felix still going up in life because of that Ivory Tower. I mean, Ivory Tower Maze, another really solid combination of cards. David losing a, a Kurt Ape here to the Abyss. And he's in full desperation mode. David, a player from Spain, by the way. A lot of old school magic in Spain, a lot of great communities in Spain. There's an attack again. I mean, it is, I mean, we know the deck, right? But still, it's kind of cool to see a player winning it here with Wasp tokens in combination with the Abyss. I mean, I got to respect that. Okay, there's a Disintegrate finishing it off, probably. Or do we see a Counterspell? Nope, that's it. Finishing it off here. Look at that. Three more Counterspells in the hand of Felix. Yeah, I mean... After those mazes and circle of protections, we kind of knew it was over. But I mean, I have a lot of respect here for David that he just keeps trying, keeps trying to find his out. But Felix winning here 2-0 with his version of the deck, winning with his Wasp army. Congratulations, Felix, winning X points 29. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things that really help the channel move forward. Please leave a like, a comment, and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. And then, uh, did I say episode? I mean episode, not episode. Anyway, uh, before you go, please take a moment to check out uh, patreon.com slash timmytalks if you haven't done so already because that is the link that's the URL to my Patreon page. And there you can find out how you can become a patron of the show. And the cool thing is, when you become a patron of the show, you're supporting me financially, helping me to keep making this content for you. But you also get a few perks. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. Your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. And uh, you can join all the Timmy Talks online events, like the Color Clash is uh, one of those events. You've seen some videos probably of that tournament here on the channel. So if you like that kind of magic, uh, join me on Patreon. So check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. For now, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Fingertus, fingertus, somber kazee. 